Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to It's Only Food. I am Chef John Polite, and this is It's Only Food. I had a follower on Facebook, on my Facebook page, uh, Andy Leesk. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Andy. He went into Starbucks and got their sous vide egg bite. They have the bacon or they have the egg white one. Uh, he thought it was kind of cool. He wanted to see a chef on YouTube or TV do this and make one from scratch in the kitchen. So I'm just going to kind of go over what sous vide is. Sous vide is a cooking method that uses food that's in a vacuum sealed bag and in, in a controlled environment of a water bath. It's cooked usually, I don't know if it's actually up to 212 where it's boiling or if it's just in a very hot water to get the food to cook anywhere from one to 48 hours and some of the stuff I've read uh, you vegetables, meats, uh, even egg right here. So this is what it looks like. It's just kind of short, looks like a little half of a cupcake without the top on it. And then we've got bacon, looks like it was kind of either placed on top or maybe wrapped around, I'm not sure. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. And the interesting thing about this, and there's two to an order, I got two right here. But the interesting thing when I went in and ordered it, and I also got a large, I can say large because they yell at you if you say large, but this is a large cup of coffee. It's supposed to be a venti. Uh, hey buddy, my cat is meowing. So uh, The interesting thing when I ordered these too, I expected them to have a machine in there where they did the sous vide stuff and all that. Uh, I ordered them. They took my orders, turned around, she walked over to a reach-in cooler, she opened it up, brought out the container that they were in, unwrapped them, put them in this little microwavable tray that you see them in, put them in a microwave, hit it for I didn't see the time on it, I was watching, uh, and then they came out and they were hot. They're not hot now because I'm holding them and they're, you know, I don't really want to hit them again in the microwave, make them tough, but I'm going to try to taste them. Uh, the food integrity is probably gone because they've been heated up and cooled off and I'm not going to heat them up again. But uh, they are not a bad product. I mean, they're they're squishy. They're not hard as rock. The bacon looks somewhat cooked. Of course, I'm not sure. It kind of strips off. It's kind of a product that you're going to find anywhere you go to get something that's fast. It is cooked all the way through. Looks rather fluffy. Uh, so I'm going to take a bite and let you know how it is. First thing that hits me is it tastes like a custard. Uh, that's not a bad thing. It does have flavor, but it also has that kind of a flavor that you're going to find when you get something fast and convenient. It doesn't have that taste that I don't know how to explain it. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. You get any napkins either. You do get it. it comes in this bag. You do get some silverware, and I believe, no, nope, you don't even get that, you just get a fork. <laughs> so, you don't get a napkin, unless they ask, I guess. But uh, the back of the bag, try our sous vide egg bites. You can't help but notice the velvety soft texture of our flavorful egg bites. We start with thoughtful ingredients and prepare them sous vide, a classically French culinary technique to ensure they're perfectly cooked for your enjoyment. So. It's not a bad product. I can't remember the cost. I think the total came to seven dollars and something, but I did get a large black coffee. Sorry, venti. So you figure it out. They're not bad. I guess if you're hungry, you get two. I mean, it's like a snack for me, but give them a hand for coming up with a different idea. I did expect to see them reheated in some sort of water bath. I'm sorry, but hey, anyway, when we come back, we're going to be making these in our kitchen right here on It's Only Food, so don't go away. Hit the kitchen and we're going to get started on these sous vide eggs. But just a reminder that this is a request from a friend on Facebook named Andy Leesk. 
He went into a Starbucks and got these. He was impressed with them and thought they were really, really good, but he wants to know how to make them at home so he's not spending the big bucks like he did at Starbucks. So I'm basically going to show you how to make these. I'm not gonna do the bacon and gruyere or the egg white and red pepper. I'm just gonna show you how to basically sous vide an egg and then you can add whatever ingredients you'd like to it. All right, so basically we're not going to just learn how to do the sous vide eggs. We're gonna learn a bit about history of sous vide. We're going to learn a little egg safety, uh, different methods of sous vide. There's not just the one way with a sealed plastic bag. Uh, there's all, uh, that, and we're not doing that. We're gonna be doing it in a uh, pot of water in mason jars and cook them that way. Hopefully I can get the egg out and present it because I haven't been able to figure out how they do that. Nothing I've looked at in the way of recipes told you how to do that. So we're gonna go on this adventure together. Um, proper temperatures for eggs, how to serve eggs when they're fresh out the grill, the temperature they should be, and also using eggs or egg product in something that's going to be hot held. All right, we're gonna head into the kitchen, show you our equipment and our ingredients and then we're gonna start doing this. All right, well here's what we're gonna use. I've got my bean pot that my wife bought me from Sears, not JC Penney's for you, those of you that corrected me because it is a Sears product, thank you. After we get the dog hair out of it, and I'm gonna fill it with water with these in it. That'll have the egg in it when we cook it. Uh, I'm gonna fill it up so I know where the water should be. Then I'm gonna take these out. We're gonna get the water to a certain temperature and we'll talk about that in a bit. I'm just doing this because I wanna have the thermometer in the water to know that I'm maintaining a certain heat in that pot that the, the eggs need to cook in. We got our eggs, they're gonna go right into these mason jars, the mixture that we're doing. And it's gonna take about an hour, it said, but we're gonna find out about that. I'm just gonna do a simple, quick egg. I'm not gonna make the bacon and gruyere or the uh, egg white with the uh, red peppers, we're just gonna make with eggs, cottage cheese, this is the secret ingredient. This is what makes them fluffy. And then I'm just gonna add some of this for color and some texture and flavor. And then I'll mix them in that bowl there. Uh, I'm also gonna need salt and pepper, but that'll come later. All right, let's get started on this experiment. I'd also like to point out that I personally have never ever had anything that was sous vide. Never had it before. We're gonna try it, never cooked it before. So we're gonna get through this together. Uh, hopefully I don't screw it up. So, all right, we're gonna start. All right, I'm gonna turn the burner on, on our pot of water that we're going to be putting the mason jars in. I have filled it with water with the mason jars in it. So I know the right amount of water. So when I put the mason jars in, I don't actually you know, like sitting in a bathtub, the water is going to go up. I didn't want to do that. So I did the mason jars first just to see that I'd have the right uh, level. I am worried about this in the way of keeping a temperature because if this takes an hour at the temperature is supposed to be at 147, they said, I'm worried about the water dissipating out of here as it's cooking. How do I add water back in? All right, like I said, I am just going to show you the simple quick recipe of how to do this. I'm not going to be adding any, you know, fancy stuff like bacon or cheese or peppers or onions or tomatoes or anything like that. We're just going to do a simple quick recipe. Start with a dozen eggs. It says for a half a cup of cottage cheese, did not specify curd size. So oh, there's a half a cup right there. Half a cup of milk or cream. Don't have any cream. Salt and pepper. Pepper. And I'm just gonna add a little savory just because it's for a little color and just a little more flavor in the egg so it's not completely boring when I go to taste test it. I'm just gonna stir these up. All right, our water temperature is at 192 and climbing. It's gonna get to boiling, which is 212, I know. So I'm gonna turn this down and try to get it to 147 to get it to that temperature to hold. So I'm gonna turn this down.
Well, so far, so good. I have transferred the egg mixture into this uh, pouring vessel because it'll be a lot easier to pour into the mason jars when we get ready to put them in the water. All right, we're reading at 181 right now. I've turned it down as far as it can go. The recipe we're going off of right now says to use water at 172. It says set your sous vide machine to 172. Um, I haven't found anything else in here. Uh, Chef Steps, which is a good source for different information for chefs, uh, says to sous vide eggs at temperature of 147. So I'm gonna do it right between the two and we'll see how that works. Okay, now I'm gonna try to lightly grease the inside of these sous vide vessels that we have here. You know what, I think I'm just gonna melt this butter in the microwave. And I think it'll be a lot easier to get in there. So I'm gonna put a couple of them in the microwave with the butter. And then we can just shake it up and that should do the trick, huh? Worked like a charm. Just gotta pop these lids on. We'll shake it up real good. That butter's all over. Shook it up. That butter is all over the inside of that. That should keep the egg from sticking to the inside there. But just to be safe, because I don't want to have to redo this whole sous vide adventure again because I did it wrong, I am going to spray the inside with a little Pam too. Now make sure that your sous vide vessels are not hot when you introduce the egg to it. And I'm just gonna fill it about half full on both because I have a feeling it's gonna rise a little bit as it cooks. And I'll put the lids on. And if you do add ingredients like bacon, cheese, any kind of vegetable, what have you, tomatoes. Uh, what I've read is to put everything on the bottom first, then pour your egg in. Don't know why, did not explain, but uh, that's what they recommend that you do. Well, I can't get the water below 170 in the pot that I've got here. Um, with the lowest setting I've got on the, on the flame is, is down as far as it'll go without flickering out and I can't get the water below 170. So we're gonna go at 170 just to see. We're gonna talk about egg safety a little bit later. So, but I've got the eggs in the jar and we're just gonna put them right on into the water. All right, it is now four o'clock. I'm gonna set the buzzer for 20 minutes. And we're going to go in 20 minute intervals to check this. And we want to have an internal temperature of at least 155 degrees. Well, I'm going to read this off because I'm not an actor. I'm actually a chef, so I don't memorize lines. So I'm going to read this stuff because I don't want to make any mistakes. And I want you, the viewer, to get as much information as you can. Sous vide is a French term for under vacuum, literally means under vacuum. It's a method of cooking in which food is sealed in a vacuum sealed plastic pouch, then placed in a warm water bath or a temperature controlled steam environment for longer than normal cooking times. Usually one to seven hours, up to 48 hours in some instances. Uh, and an accurately regulated temperature much lower than normally used for cooking. Typically around 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, 131 to 140 Fahrenheit. For meats at higher for vegetables. The intent is to cook the item evenly, ensuring that the inside is properly cooked without overcooking the outside and to retain moisture. All right, well there's our buzzer for the first 20 minutes. We just shut that off. 
Uh, you can see the temperature is around 156. I have messed with it a little bit and fiddled with it to get it to go a little higher. I'd like to get it to 165. That's the temperature that I will feel comfortable with it for egg safety purposes and reasons. Uh, but there we go. I don't really look to see that it's setting at all. I'm going to pull this up and out. Yeah, it's just, you can tell it's just starting to cook a little bit. Um, I'm going to set that back into the water. Uh, make sure you don't put your lids on too tight either because, you know, as we all know, contraction with hot and cold. We don't want these lids to get too tight where we can't take them off and we're done. Uh, so we're going to set the buzzer for another 20 minutes and we will check back. All right. Well, a little uh, safety, egg safety and storage tips for you. Always keep your shell eggs and your egg products like uh, egg beaters and things like that. Keep them in a refrigerator uh, at 41 degrees. And when you cook eggs or anything with eggs in it, if you're going to hold it in a hot steam table or in a casserole dish or something if you're having company, always cook it to 155 for 15 seconds and let it sit at that temperature like you're stuffing too if you're making something with egg in it. Make sure that it's up to temperature at 155 for 15 seconds. Also if you're cooking eggs for your kids or your family, if you're cooking scrambled eggs, fried eggs, quiche, whatever, make sure that when you cook it, boom, it's coming out of the pan, but make sure it's at least 145 degrees for 15 seconds before. I mean, you don't have to sit there and temp it all the time. You gotta know if your eggs are runny, you don't wanna eat them, don't do it. So. Little egg safety. Just kind of take a look at this. This is kind of firming up a little bit. Actually, it's firming up quite a bit in the little one. It's still kind of runny. I am just going to pop one of these out just to see what the uh, internal temperature is. Take a dish towel and I'm going to take the lid off of this one just so I can see what the internal temperature is because I'm very curious to see what's at after 40 minutes. It's still a bit runny. You can see that. But I'm going to take... Oh, it's set down in the... Bottom part is set. I can feel it. But not until I get about halfway down. So... It's at 169. 170. So that's good. That's good. It's getting there. And this is setting too, so I'm going to get this back into the heat and let this cook. And we'll set our buzzer for another 20 minutes. And that will take us to uh, 60 minutes, one hour. Well, I went for the uh, nutritional information. I went right to the Starbucks webpage, and you can print it right off for the egg white and red pepper. That is 170 calories. Uh, total fats 11%, 7 grams. Cholesterol 25 milligrams. Uh, protein at three, 13 grams. And sodium at 500 milligrams. Uh, the bacon and gruyere is much higher in saturated fat and calories. Calories are 310. Total fats 22 grams. Trans fats are both zero on both items. Uh, the cholesterol is 185 milligrams. That's 62%. Uh, sodium is 600, uh, protein is 19 grams, which is still good because it is an egg and it's got cheese and bacon in it also. Um, always remember that when you take the yolk out of an egg, you're taking out the vitamins and minerals along with the cholesterol and calories and fat. So just be aware of that, thinking you're eating healthier. You may be when you're reducing the fat, calories, and cholesterol, but you're also taking away all the vitamins and minerals that are involved with that egg when you take out the egg yolk. All right, well, last night I shot a scene of taking them out of the water bath and opening them up and temping them out, making sure they were done. They were set. They looked pretty good. They smelled fantastic. And then I put the lids on and put them back into the refrigerator to cool overnight so we could work with them today. The only problem is, is that scene did not have sound because I forgot to turn the microphone on. So uh, I'm going to show you a picture here. This is what they look like in the refrigerator. They are ready to go. They are nice and firm. I am going to take a spatula and try to work it out. I noticed with the big mason jar that the only thing I noticed was the mouth comes up like this. So what's in there is too fat to get out the mouth. So the baby 
um, I should write this down. So the, the little grape jelly jar that's in there is perfect because it's exactly the same cylindrical size all the way up from the bottom to the top. There's no uh, closing of the top so it's too small. We'll show you that in just a minute. But right, I just wanted to explain to you about the scene where there was no sound because I screwed up. Okie doke, here is our mason jars. With the egg last night I kind of played with it a little bit to see how it was going to be when we came to work with it. <laughs> like I said, you can see where it narrows down here to the opening of the jar. And we got a little bit of a problem with it coming out. This, however, does not have an opening where it will do that. I'm just going to take a knife and I'm just going to go around like this. Oh, there it is. There is the egg bite. As you can see, it's cooked all the way through. It holds pretty good. It is fluffy. I can feel it. That cottage cheese, I think, is what brought out that, that fluffiness in it. So we're going to cut this. I'm going to go about the same size that they did for Starbucks. That was one jar. There's three right there. As you can see, it's pretty good. It's, it's got some heft to it. That's actually pretty heavy for that little bit. But uh, that's what it looks like. There's air pockets in there. You can see where the air and the, it boiled almost and it, it shot through the through the egg as it cooked so a little bit of white it's the cottage cheese so actually we're going to plate these up make them look good and then we're going to come back all right well here's our finished product our sous speed eggs all plated up and ready to go I'm going to take some more pictures of this for my social media and we'll uh, put a couple different angles up there for you to look at and enjoy with some pretty nice music. And then we'll come back, we will talk about what we've learned. different ways to sous vide. You don't have to do it in a machine that regulates the temperature, have the vacuum sealed bags. The way we're doing it is actually in mason jars or jars with lids submerged into boiling water at a controlled temperature. There is also egg cups that you can use. We used to coddle eggs back in the day and there was a certain tool that we had. It was almost like an egg where you keep your eggs in the egg cartons. And you could put crack your eggs into that and then set them into the water and you coddled an egg. It's kind of a cross between poaching and boiling. And then you could also do the bag, just put everything into a sealable kitchen sandwich bag and just throw it into the boiling water. It ain't gonna be presentable, but I'll guarantee you that. But there's another ver version of how to do it. All right, Andy, I'm gonna try these out and see how they are. Uh, like I said, these got a lot of weight. It's really funny. They're very heavy. This is just the one right there. And I'm gonna give it a bite here. Remember all we did was eggs. We did not do anything with bacon or cheese or any kind of filling. It's just egg, cream, and cottage cheese. And I put some savory and salt and pepper in there too. But these are very good. I did not heat these up either. So I know some of you think that's kind of weird, but I didn't heat them up at all. This has got some texture. This has got some heft to it. It's got creaminess to it. It's very, very good. This would be really good with some Gruyere and bacon in it. I know it would be, but this is not bad. And what we saw in the refrigerator with just two mason jars or two jelly jars, you can get quite a bit. So if you do, and I still got a half of a container left of the egg mixture that we did. So I could do uh, another batch of these and you get you get about three days four days worth of breakfasts out of these so that'll save you some money so let's review what we've learned um, we learned a little bit about what sous vide is the history of sous vide 
uh, the nutritional information of all this. Uh, remember, if you take the yolk out of the egg, you're also taking out the cholesterol, the calories and the fat, but you're also taking out the vitamins and the minerals. Just remember that if you're watching what you eat and you're paying attention to your nutrition. It's important to get the calories and the cholesterol out, but you got, and these are high in sodium too, by the way, at Starbucks. Don't send the Starbucks goons after me for saying that. It is up on their webpage. And we also learned a little bit about egg safety. So, um, what I have learned from this, from cooking this, excuse me, there are different ways to do sous vide. I did not know that. Uh, temperature consistency, regulate your temperature as best that you can throughout the whole cooking process. Uh, the vessel size, make sure if you're doing these eggs, especially that your vessel that you're cooking them in, I used that mason jar, narrows up at the neck and where the opening is, very hard to get that egg out. I used the jelly jar too. The jelly jar was perfect because it, it popped right out, slid right out, not a problem, cylindrical right out. Uh, grease your inside of your vessel very, very well too. Andy, I hope this helped you out. I know I sure learned a lot about it. Uh, it brought me out of my comfort zone, both in the kitchen and in the filming part of this. So I learned a lot. I hope everybody that watches this learned a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for joining in and watching today. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video and this um, channel. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And share this video and this channel with everyone you know. Thanks a lot for joining us again. Andy, thanks a lot for your request. I hope I made you proud. Take care, and we'll see you next time right here on It's Only Food. Bye-bye.